Hi folks, it's Ken Everett from Digital Matter here. Excuse the uh, moustache, it's Movember, a bit of a different look for me. Um, I'm here today just to really give you a quick update on our um, wired GPS tracking devices. These are our bread and butter, if you like, of tracking going into vehicles and equipment. And uh, it's important to keep you updated as to where we're headed with technology on these units. Um, as usual, a bit of a disclaimer, some of this stuff contains quite forward-looking statements. Um, but really where we are today is a lot of it is actually already going into production. Um, so just a quick historical update on where we've come from, right? The, the idea with our, our four uh, wired or powered devices that we've got in the range is to try and cater for different use cases based on um, the cost of the unit through to the, uh, the features and the, uh, I guess, complexity of installation. Um, and I think we've managed to, to have a good range from that perspective and we're continuing to update it. So historically, we've got the Bolt device, which is really our lowest cost, simplest, easy to install product that plugs into the OBD2 port on uh, any uh, light vehicle and can be useful for fleet management. Um, the Dart 2 has been one of our biggest sellers. It's really a, a low cost, wired product that features a number of digital inputs and outputs, things like remote mobilization, and driver ID options, and that's a great um, product for fleet management and for tracking in vehicles. The G62 has historically been excellent for equipment tracking. That's really our rugged product with a very rugged RP67 housing, great for going on to equipment, and includes uh, things like inputs and outputs, remote mobilization, and driver ID, and a bit more on some of the new stuff we've added there in later slides. And then right across on the right-hand side in this table is the G120, which is our big daddy, if you like, of fleet tracking. And it's kind of feature-packed in terms of lots of IOs. Um, and I guess one of its biggest differentiators is it's got the Bluetooth gateway on there, so it can talk to Bluetooth tags and Bluetooth sensors. And it also has a, an optional Iridium satellite interface so that you can uh, attach Iridium satellite modems to it to give you out-of-coverage tracking in use cases where um, you absolutely need to know where the vehicles are, where the staff are at any point in time. Um, so that's the current lineup, and we'll get on to what's changing uh, shortly. So the, the next generation products, one of the design considerations that we've taken into place, and one of the main ones really as to why we we're even looking at um, revising the design of the products, was availability. So the global component shortage has really been causing grief across the whole supply chain. With these new versions, one of the things we've been able to do is design the product from the outset knowing um, that we can source certain components, where some of the components in the current um, product designs have either been end of life or just really difficult to get for some reason. So one of the, gr the great things about doing the revision of the product is that we have pre-ordered a lot of the component stock that we need on the new product. So um, we're going to have a more secure stock supply going into 2022, which is good. Then, obviously, the other opportunity uh, thing about the, the redesign is the opportunity to introduce and update the, the features on the device. And that's really, as far as the wired product goes, is more of an evolutionary uh, update as opposed to the battery-powered stuff. Um, you might have watched the, my previous video on our battery-powered roadmap where we're really making some, some extraordinary and revolutionary steps forward in terms of you know, five times battery life. So the, the innovation on the wired products is kind of less revolutionary, if you like, but it's, it remains our focus to keep updating the technologies that we're using the best possible um, technology on the devices. And that leads into the third point, which is uh, designing the products to outperform our competition. So our, our focus has always been on the engineering that goes into our products. The focus is there on performance and reliability is super important to us to make sure that the products uh, work well in the field and require the least amount of maintenance. One of the, um, well, let's just have a deep dive into some of these features. So one of the things we've done is on the 4G product, uh, updated the, the CAD M1 and MBIT uh, modem option that we use on there. Um, we spent quite a lot of time working with this um, and evaluating various module suppliers and settled on uh, the Nordic NRF 9160, which is we're using in our battery powered product. And we've also then migrated to use that in in the new wired devices as well on the 4G side of things. It's got fantastic support for LTM or CAD M1 and MBIT. The same module can do both. And uh, it will seamlessly switch between those networks, which we've done some great testing 
with roaming sims across Europe and getting fantastic performance roaming across the different networks. Uh, what we're seeing is that the LTM and MBIT networks are rolling out uh, all the time around the world. So uh, coverage is becoming much less and less of an issue. And the technology allows us to reduce data usage and ongoing costs, but more importantly, use lower energy, right? So what you'll find is that the new devices will run for much longer on their battery backup um, if that's required. So um, things like trailer tracking, where you may have the device powered uh, for short periods of time, you need to charge up the battery and then have it operate uh, off the battery are uh, a lot more feasible. The other nice thing about the new modem is the enhanced cell tower location information that we get from the modem. So we're getting the serving cell plus neighboring cell timing data, and this can be used for a fallback location if the GNSS for some reason can't get a fix. Um, probably less of a mainstream use case, but if, you, if you're thinking about um, stolen equipment tracking, if that equipment is, is hidden in a container and being moved around the country or even out of the country, um, you might not be getting a GNSS fix, but you can certainly use the cell tower location to give you an approximate location. It depends on the number of cell towers it's seeing, but generally we, we get down to a couple of hundred meter accuracy using this information, which is pretty good. And then the, some other general improvements we've done across the board. The one I want to mention is uh, the WeGAN support. Um, it's kind of a weird term, and a lot of people don't really know what it is, but this is an industry standard that's been around for many, many decades in access control. Essentially, to, to cut to the chase in terms of what we're doing, is it allows you to source any card reader that supports WeGAND on the market and interface it to the tracking device. So that's particularly useful for uh, scenarios where you're selling the product into a company that has existing, has existing um, access control cards and they want to use those cards to identify the, the drivers rather than issuing them with new RFID tags or some other form of identification. So, so remember the name Wigand, uh, not difficult to, to integrate and wire in, um, uh, and it certainly opens options in terms of driver ID. Um, we've also squeezed some extra IOs onto most of the, the wired devices, uh, more on each one in particular coming up, and we've introduced the backup battery on the Bolt 2, ready to handle situations where if somebody inadvertently or deliberately unplugs the unit that the device has power to obviously send an alert and send a notification to the system that it's been un unplugged and actually continue tracking while it's uh, not plugged in. So cutting to uh, the chase, we talk dive into the, the next gen product. So the Bolt has migrated to what we're calling the Bolt 2, um, actually in production already, uh, available today only in an LTM NBIT version. Um, it's the plug-and-play OBD2 device that plugs in very easily. And really, the bottom line here is it's, uh, it's a low-cost unit with hopefully a zero-dollar installation cost. Really simple to plug in and get going. You can get splitter cables and extender cables if you really want to uh, hide the unit inside the dash using that. Um, the device also does driver profiling using the accelerometer. It automatically calibrates itself based on GPS um, data and the accelerometer data. So within... 10 to 15 minutes of plugging the unit in, it's calibrated itself to how it's orientated in the vehicle. So the big addition there is the internal rechargeable backup battery. As I've said, great to be notified if the device is unplugged or tampered. The, the other important thing to, to note here, and it's probably not something you'll notice until you get start using it in like really tr you know, testing conditions, is that we've, we've managed to increase the, the Genesis patch antenna size on the device and the ground plan around it. And what that does is it just means the, the RF performance on the, the GPS GNSS is, is even better than the previous version, which is great, right? Better performance, that's what we, we want to do. And then the cell tower location data is there if needed. The DART 2 is now migrated to the DART 3. There's both 2G and um, LTM CADM1 MBIT versions uh, coming. Um, the DART 3 4G is just gone to production now. Uh, 2G will be coming uh, next year, early next year. Um, so really the same great performance and features as the DART 2. We have added an analog input. So this was something that uh, a lot of people are using to try and integrate other sensors, whether it be a, a fuel level meter or anything. Um, but we've got the option of, of hooking an analog input in now. And we've squeezed in an additional digital input as well. We've added the driver ID support for Wigan that I mentioned before. And then we've got the cell time uh, data as well for location fallback. So really a, a great unit at a good, good
good price point um, that is fully featured for um, fleet management and it's um, uh, excellent driver ID and uh, driver behavior in there as well. So generally, the, we feel the Dart is, is going to be one of our biggest selling wired devices um, because of its great functionality at a good price point. The G62 is now migrating to the G70. Um, we are about to go to uh, the initial production on this device as well. So that's um, locked down on the 4G devices and 2G coming um, early next year. So the great same, same great performance and ruggedness of the G62 uh, with an additional analog input and a digital input on there. So you can just you can do more with the device, which is obviously important. And we've added um, driver ID support for more driver ID options on there. So we get and using our RFID fobs uh, with our reader, if, if that's what you want. And obviously the cell tower data on the 4G units as well. Um, great unit for tracking equipment, uh, where you need something that's properly rugged and waterproof, um, a good option. The G120 at this stage, um, we've just keep going with the current design. Um, we're busy reviewing what our options are around the uh, next version of the G120. Um, but we've got production plan going into 20 to 2 around the existing product. Um, really, this is the, the big daddy of the range. Uh, a lot more digital inputs and outputs, um, including RS-232 that we can use for our Iridium Edge module, um, driver ID behavior, and it's got a built-in buzzer as well. Um, so a good product for, I guess, high-end uh, fleet management use cases. This is a great summary. Um, that Shay, our marketing director, has put together across the range. Um, I'm not going to talk to this too much as I've talked to most of these things already, but um, I'll leave that up there for just a little while so you can uh, see it. And that, um, that comparison table is available from any one of your Digital Matter sales team if you'd like to get it from them. Um, so really, in conclusion, uh, where we're at in terms of the roadmap is a great evolution of our wired devices with more to come. So we are working on a new device to tackle some of the IoT sensor side of things, which uh, would be able to be externally powered, but more, more information on that shortly. Um, in conclusion, I'd also just like to add that you know the supply chain woes and problems that we're facing are continuing. Um, at this stage, it really only looks like we're hopefully going to get out of this uh, shortage scenario towards the end of next year even. So um, right now we're doing a lot to plan around that. Uh, what we found is PCB lead times have pushed out to over 12 weeks just for the, the bare PCBs. Uh, the components that we've ordered, um, things change on a weekly basis and including being told that what we've ordered we're not actually going to be yielding and we'll only get part of it. And of course prices just increased across the board not only on components but also on things like shipping and actual manufacturing. From the digital matter side, you know, we've taken this on uh, about nine months ago, in fact, and have dedicated staff to just managing our materials and resource planning, uh, making sure we forecast, the sales teams have forecast a long time ago, uh, a year and more ahead, and we put in um, component orders for 2022. Um, we're busy, in fact, I just released some purchase orders the other day for product to be delivered in 2023, can you believe it? So we're doing our best to try and make sure we can get stock, make stock and get stock to you. But I really, really urge you and encourage you to get your orders in with us. So if you are able to, forecast what you're going to be needing for 22 and then get an order in with us or orders in with us to get in the queue. Um, it, it really is um, a difficult situation to be managing at the moment. So uh, I urge you to chat to your Digital Matter sales representative and work with us to help you get stock. Uh, we have forecast a lot of stock. We have got a lot coming, but um, I really urge you to, to keep talking with us to, to make sure you can get your share of that. Um, so in conclusion, thanks for listening. Uh, we've got some good stuff going on. Um, I'm going to be doing a, a video shortly on our LoRaWAN range as well. Um, but yeah, thanks very much for listening. Cheers.